I just... Stay tuned for last night to speak to us over here at and building. Ted Bennett, he come up over here last night and spoke to us on that pipeline. Yeah. Hills and a dramatic rescue in Rockbridge County pulls two people out of the middle of the Maury River. Good evening, Leanne is on assignment in Lynchburg. Our top story this afternoon, one of the most devastated areas in the Channel 10 viewing area, Campbell County and the city of Lynchburg. The worst of the flooding there has caused a collapse of Timberlake Dam, resulting in thousands of dollars in damage and the death of a Lynchburg firefighter. Channel 10's Peter Cook joins us now live from Campbell County with the latest. Peter, uh, what is the situation this afternoon? Well, John, as you can see behind me, there is an incredible amount of devastation still remaining here from the flooding last night. Just behind me are tow trucks, which are towing cars out that were just a few hours ago submerged. Uh, it was here at, the, uh, at Route 460 at the Bedford-Campbell County line that uh, some of the worst damage happened last night. It was here that the floodwaters from Timberlake Dam and the storm took their biggest toll. This is all that's left of Timber Lake. Eight inches of steady rain last night did what 69 years of previous storms could not. It collapsed the lake's dam to the shock of nearby residents like Lester Dean, who helped build it years ago. It's unbelievable, unbelievable. Absolutely it is. Absolutely. I'll be perfectly honest with you, I never thought it would be this bad. Bad feeling. Yeah, it's a real catastrophe. When the water broke free here last night, it took only moments for the water to rush downstream. About a mile away, volunteer rescue squad member Carter Martin was busy trying to save a stranded motorist's life. He never knew what hit him. Martin was a full-time Lynchburg firefighter in addition to being a volunteer at Brookville Timberlake. Well, I had to say that if he chose a way to go knowing Carter, he wanted to go out serving. And uh, he's, uh, he's certainly was a diligent and dedicated individual. Thanks to the rest across the rest of Campbell County and Lynchburg, damage wasn't as impressive as it was at Timber Lake, but it was costly. Houses are flooded, fields are flattened, and roads are destroyed. The closest thing to it was the Nelson County floods in 1969 and then uh, the Hurricane Agnes in 1972, but uh, it's uh, amazing the power that water has on flood situation like this. Lynchburg's mayor puts this in John. Behind me is the bridge where the, uh, the rain, the water from the lake 
crashed over 460. It was five and a half feet above street level here, above ground level. So right now, I would be right about neck high in water last night. Peter Cook reporting live this afternoon. Thank you very much, Peter. Flowed its banks today, forcing the Virginia Department of Transportation to close the northbound lane of Highway 29 at one point. VDOT said the high water and debris made travel over the bridge too dangerous and said they will not open that bridge again until the water levels drop significantly. With the bridge closed for much of the day, many heading north had to take an hour detour around the high water. Fortunately, we are told now that the bridge has since reopened. After spending more than nine hours on the roof of their Rockbridge summer home, two women are resting easy tonight. But early this morning, floodwaters surrounded this cabin, forcing Julia Broward and Mary Fralin Lohr to the roof. Family members held their breath as a rescue effort ensued. A Covington Swiftwater rescue team was placed on standby as a U.S. Coast Guard helicopter flew in from North Carolina to rescue the women. I really didn't think I'd be here today. Mm. And I thought if I was, I'd have a lot of stories to tell. <laughs> my fear, uh, my love for my cabin overcomes my fear. <laughs> The two women made the best of it. They took food and water up to the roof and played board games to get them through the ordeal. They say it was scary, but not enough to keep them away from their favorite vacation spots. That's the big First of it, yes, it appears to be, although there may be occasional heavy downpours. It's not as nearly as widespread as it was yesterday. The rainfall totals coming out of Campbell and Bedford County up through Rockbridge County are nothing short of phenomenal. This is the rainfall estimate as done by the Doppler radar. Anything you see shaded in yellow, that's at least two and a half inches of rain. Look at the huge coverage of that at least moderate to heavy rainfall. You move it into the reds where you're talking between six and eight inches of rain. And right there in the southeastern tip of Campbell County, just to the west of Alta Vista, rainfall estimate by the Doppler of around 15 inches of rain last night. So that is why things are as bad as they are in that particular region and a pretty broad coverage of between 10 and 12 inches of rain. This is a long term Doppler display here. This is over about the last 10 hours. What you can see going on here is that there are more showers in the area, but they're not as widespread or as heavy as they were yesterday. You also notice that we've got rain going two different directions here. What that essentially means is that the parent of all this, the upper level storm, is now sitting right about over the New River Valley, which means it is finally beginning to move out of the region, or at least slowly moving through the region. And your Metro Doppler indicates also well, more showers around the Smith Mountain Lake area. They're now moving up toward the city of Bedford. Pretty good thunder shower right now in progress near Bedford. You're probably getting a pretty heavy downpour from that as it moves on toward the north. And there are other showers and thunderstorms scattered once again throughout the mid-Atlantic. When you see this much rain on the map, what that means is that we're going to see rain off and on for probably the next two days. The heaviest rain now, though. Also, many secondary roads in the area are washed out. If you see water on the road, please do not attempt to cross the highway. That's where most fatalities happen during these floods is in automotive uh, situations. Here is the uh, situation right now. Roads blocked Route 460 West at the uh, Bedford-Campbell County line. Uh, also blocked this afternoon, uh, Flat Creek, Route 24 in Bedford County. Uh, route uh, 122 is blocked east of Big Island this afternoon. Roads blocked include uh, Route 43 in Alta Vista, uh, Route 29 Business in Alta Vista, and Route 39 in Goshen Pass. All these with water still over them this afternoon. The intersection of Routes 39 and 42 in Goshen Block, so stay away, away from all of these areas, obviously. Uh, roads blocked Route 11 in Rockbridge County. Timber Lake. Well, basically, this uh, ran down from Timber Lake, uh, John. What we're looking at right now is a ravine. Just a few moments ago, a car was just pulled away from here. They believe maybe two or three more cars may be down in this ravine. Let's take a look. Right now, what they have been doing all afternoon is pulling cars out and towing them away. It's been a very messy situation. And now what we're going to do is take a look over here at where the car was. It was right over in this ravine. As you can see, there is damage and devastation everywhere, and the state police are very concerned there may be two or three more cars down in that ravine alone. Uh, what we know right now also is that possibly the um, we've got a situation where the helicopters have been flying, Red Cross helicopters, and we know that possibly uh, Governor Allen may be in that helicopter is what we're being told by state police, but we're not sure. Also, John, we know that Highway 29 has been reopened and Highway 24 remains closed at Flat Creek. 
and they are watching the roads around Brookneal near, uh, Brookneal, near Stanton at this hour. The waters are rising out there. And, John, I'm going to toss it back to you. Of course, we're going to have a complete wrap-up coming up tonight at 6. All right, Leah, this is here reporting live. Timberlake, where all that's left is a mud hole. There's tragedy to report involving a local firefighter. Carter Martin lost his life while trying to save another. A tribute to the brave firefighter. And Maddox Rescue. This is News 13 at 6. I'm Pam Windsor. And I'm Tina Douglas. Topping our news tonight, devastation and desolation. Central Virginia's experienced a terrible bout with flooding overnight. One life has been lost in the raging waters, and many families have been forced to find shelter as they watch their homes wash away. This round of flooding features one of the strangest sights ever by rushing waters. News 13's Toby Cook joins us live from Timberlake, just north of Highway 460 in Campbell County, where I understand there's been an incredible transformation. Toby? Absolutely, Tina. If pictures are worth a thousand words, then the pictures we're about ready to show you are worth a million. For all intents and purposes, Timber Lake doesn't exist anymore. It's just a mud bed and a heck of a mess. They all came out to sea, but there's no way they could believe their eyes. A mirage in reverse. 10,000 cubic feet of dirt giving way. The earthen dam took the lake water with it. This is a shock. I figured there would be water in the lake. There's nothing, absolutely nothing. When a dam breaks, it's usually downstream we worry about. In this catastrophe, there is no upstream to worry about, only remnants, some dirt and a few dead fish. And normally in a flood, you'd be concerned about how high the water gets. Obviously, in this case, how high is not the problem. Tom Hutchinson grew up here. I mean, every summer of my life, I've been down here swimming in this lake, and this is unbelievable. By noon, safety authorities were shooing folks away. The ground underneath what's left of the road is soft and could buckle. Bridging this chasm seems like an impossible dream right now. Whether this will ever be a lake again is even more tough to say. Now we're left with a, uh, a stream that was the one that was here in 1923 before anybody thought of putting a lake here. That last gentleman, Bud Coiner, he is the president of the Timberlake uh, Home Builders Association. He's already spoken with an engineer who says they're looking in to try to repair this dam pretty soon, Tina. Toby, is there any thought as to how soon the road and dam could be fixed? Well, actually, it could be months. It actually could be never. But the residents here say that the lake has too much of a history, and they say they have too much of a spirit to not let it happen. Of course, this is going to be uh, taking a long time. And if they ever do repair the dam, they say that it could be three months for the water to fill up to its original level. Unbelievable. Exactly mm. how did the dam break in the first place? Well, there's a lot of thought to that, and over the next couple of months in investigations, they're going to try to figure that out. The best that they can tell us, and we may be able to show you here, is that the water actually came up to about here at one point over the dam, and that's really never happened before. It just gave way. They'll try to figure out exactly why a little bit later. All right. Thanks a lot, Toby, for that live report. As we mentioned, flooding claimed one life last night. That's 96. O.W. Williams waved his flashlight to signal that he was still holding tight. Rescue crews rowed a small boat to his location and brought him to safety. In Lynchburg, two motorists clung to the roof of their car as water rushed around them. The car was swept off McConville Road after heavy downpours caused Tomahawk Creek to swell. Firefighters brought in a hook and ladder truck just to get close enough. Rescuers tossed life jackets to the victims, then used lines to pull them from the top of the car and they climbed to safety. Flooding is no stranger to this area. And after experiencing the floods of 1985 and the showers of 92, the city was prepared for the worst last night. News 13 Shannon Powell shows us how Lynchburg is responding to the high waters. By dead tree limbs and silt covering what was once grass. The effects of floods at the Blackwater Creek Nature Trail and Park. The owner of this home located off Hurdle Hill Road spent the day cleaning out the house. The brick dam wall beside the home was no competition for the creek's water. At a press conference today, Mayor Whitaker... It's usually a main point of concern. In the past, it's overflowed its banks, but not this time. Flood officials say if the weather goes as forecasted, then it will crest three feet below flood stage. Flood stage in Lynchburg. Waters. 
Now, as part uh, of our team coverage, Shannon joins us live from the newsroom with more on Lynchburg's situation. Shannon, there were several roads that were closed off. What is the status today? Pam, you're right on that, but most of the roads to parks and creeks all around Lynchburg have opened up today, but there is extensive water damage in public and private places all over, all over the city today. The mayor estimates the floods have caused nearly half a million dollars in damages at this particular point in public areas, and he says once the water recedes, it could go up. Now, if if that is the case, then the city may apply for FEMA relief help within a 48-hour period. Pam, back to you. Okay, so the city is calm now, but they're watching the situation. Thank you, Shannon. Right. Floodwaters cut off the main artery between southwest and central Virginia for several hours, tying up traffic all night and early this morning. Route 460 on the Campbell-Bedford County line is a mess. And as News 13's Rich Parsons shows us, cleanup will be slow going. Rampaging floodwaters tore through Buffalo Creek Thursday night, sweeping a half dozen cars off of this bridge on Route 460 at the Campbell-Bedford County line. Wayne Ferguson and his wife were in one of those cars, and they tried to escape the rising floodwaters on foot, a move that nearly cost them their lives. We lost our footing in the uh, westbound lane. Uh, she, she fell first, and we had a death lock grip on each other. She fell first, and... Uh, the water took us across the median here, and I don't think our feet touched the ground until we got over here. And I said, we've got to stop here. We've got to get foothold here. The bridge maintained its foothold and survived the flood, despite being completely underwater for most of the night. With the morning light, it became clear just how devastating this flood was, and dozens of folks came out to Old Timberlake Road for a first-hand look at Mother Nature's handiwork. Most of them left just shaking their heads. It's a disaster. I never thought it'd be a nothing around here like that would happen. You know, I mean, I've never seen nothing like that in all my 19 years. It's sad. I feel bad. I feel bad for, uh, for the people and all the fish in the lake and everything. It was a nice, nice area. It's going to take a little while to clean it up. The trees along Buffalo Creek were knocked over like toothpicks and part of the road is now part of the creek bed. Locals say they've never seen anything like this and they hope they never see it again. Reporting for Virginia's 13, I'm Rich Parsons. Now Route 460 was reopened this morning after state transportation officials inspected the bridge and ruled it was safe for traffic. Both eastbound lanes are open, one lane westbound is still closed. One other note, US 29 at Otter River northbound lane, which was closed earlier today, is now open. There's still plenty more to come about to a dramatic rescue in Rockbridge County. Meet the cousins who lived through a night on top of their roof. It's toll here. Where, you, uh, where we are right now is where the Timberlake just came crashing through this region. And of course, further south from here in Alta Vista, the Otter and the Roanoke Rivers are creating plenty of problems there. Our Kelly Stern takes a look as the rivers there continue to rise tonight. It's here that the Big Otter and Little Otter Creeks come together to form Otter River. But today it looked more like a lake as last night's rain forced the creeks over their banks. On any given day, it's usually about a 30 foot drop from the bottom of the bridge to the top of the water. But as you can see today, it's only about three or four feet. And that had VDOT officials concerned enough to close the northbound lane of Route 29. Well, I'm sure that it's caused an awful lot of, of travel problems for the morning commuters. People can't get to and from work by their regular routes. Uh, the water appears to be residing some, but it's probably going to be a while before a lot of the roads are open. The high waters also caused many to be stranded, some at home and others at work. We've got about two foot of water in the mill, and we've had 20 men call in that couldn't get to work because yeah. of the water. Now the only thing for people to do is wait for the water to subside. Kelly Stern, Channel 10 News, Alta Vista. Okay, and state police have now told us that the bridge over Otter River has been reopened. Traffic is pretty much back to normal. Of course, it's going to take quite a while for this region to get back to normal after all of this flooding. John and Bill, I'm sure that you have the latest on the weather. Bill? In terms of its flood stage, right now it's sitting at 6 feet over flood stage. Brookneal, the crest comes at around midnight at 4 feet over flood stage on the Dan River South Boston expect about a three foot flood crest during the day tomorrow. The James River no flooding expected in our area and the Maury River has already dropped below flood stage. It'd be